Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA betting breakdown for this last UFC card of the uh, of the year. And I have to tell you, this has been a lot of fun to do the uh, to do the betting breakdowns because, well, for those of you that have seen the last bunch of them, you'll you'll know why. But for those that are starting now, um, again, let me just explain how I handle wagering. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to go through this each time. And so maybe I put an FAQ up there. Uh, in any case, uh, when you play daily fantasy sports, once again, um, and you could fast forward through this if you want, uh, if you've heard this before, when you play daily fantasy sp sports, the overarching uh, presumption is that the lines uh, implied by Vegas are accurate, um, that the inside the distance lines are accurate, that the money lines are accurate. And what you do is you you know, take those presumptions and then, you know, and make projections based on the way fantasy points are scored based on those, those presumptions. Okay. And the way you get your edge in daily fantasy sports is not necessarily uh, figuring out what line is wrong. It's more uh, figuring out who everybody else is going to play and how to get leverage against that information, you know, and how to, properly build lineups um, of, of differing types of fighters. You know, you have some high upside fighters, some safe fighters, some low own, some high own, and things like that. And, and that type of art is where you gain your edge. You don't necessarily look to gain your edge by beating the line. Uh, as a matter of fact, like I said, most of DFS is predicated upon assuming that the lines are accurate. Um, so when you analyze DFS, that's a one completely separate sphere of, of, of analysis. However, when you're doing wagering, you are presuming the exact opposite, right? You're presuming that all of the lines are wrong, right? If you are going, well, at least the ones you want to bet on. Because the idea is that, you know, Vegas puts up these lines and for some reason you think that they're off. Um, and that's the only way you can have an edge in betting anything really like in betting anything with a VIG or you bet on the stock market, you have a one cent spread. You have to pay sometimes for commissions. When you bet on an NBA game, you have probably have to lay a dollar five either way. There's some VIG you have to overcome uh, to, to turn a profit. So you have to have knowledge or at least a lean of which way the line is wrong. Now, again, that doesn't mean you can't bet, right? If you don't have that type of edge, you know, you can bet for fun, and obviously there's something to be said for that, but for the purposes of coming up with good EV plays, um, you, you have to presume that the line is wrong in some way. So the way I deal with, say, the stock market, and this is my philosophy that's worked for me for literally 20 years, um, is, is sort of a blend. You, you can presume that the price in stocks is somewhat efficient, meaning that all the information or at least most of the information is already priced in. But you, what I've developed an incredible ability to do is to figure out how much of that price or how much of that information or how much of all of that intelligence that's put into that price is predicated on what they call nonsense. You know, How much is based on bias, whether recency bias or other kinds of biases, as opposed to actual data. And if you see a line or a stock price or anything where the majority of what's going into that price is a bunch of fluff or a bunch of hope or a bunch of just positive psychology, then you can make a pretty good living just kind of fading that in the other direction. Um, it sounds great. Sounds easy if you could do it. It is very difficult. Um, but uh, it, it is the way that I handle all types of wagering like that when you can have some presumption that the markets are efficient. Now, is it possible that the MMA market is inefficient? Is it possible the lines are wrong? Is it possible that people have knowledge that could overcome that? Uh, yeah, possibly. But I will say this, that the VIG in MMA is pretty pretty brutal. You know, you have like $1.30 by $1.30 on the other side. You have sometimes 40 cent lines. Some of the props, you have like, like $2 lines. It's freaking crazy. So you've got to not only be good, but you've got to be good by a lot. Um, and yes, the, those of you that were thinking this, the holy grail is obviously to be able to combine these two, two disciplines, be able to obtain an edge based on knowledge, 
be able to obtain an additional edge based on your gauge of psychology. And then if you want to apply that to DFS, then you're a billionaire, okay? Um, so uh, I would say billionaire, but you know what I'm saying. So we are going to attack the MMA slate from that perspective, from figuring out, or at least attempt to figure out what of this line makes sense, what doesn't, what is gauged by psychology? If everybody's on one side and the line is just seems fishy, it's probably fishy. You're supposed to go the other way. And as a result, you know, you're going to come up with some really weird plays. If you follow me, but so far so good. We're, we're up, uh, I think seven units since we started. And here's a couple of rules, right? So first thing I bet literally everything that I recommend. That's number one. Number two, I would, put a bet in on every single fight on the card. And listen, you can say that's not discipline. I don't care. That's what I'm doing. Um, I'm putting the same amount in on every single bet. I'm not in two units, three units, five units. I literally have no particular level of confidence in any of these over the others. That's just the way that I'm doing. Okay? And just so you know, it's going to be lucky high times 10, 180 for each individual wager. And you will hopefully see me put them in if Zoom doesn't block me from putting them in on draftkings.com. Okay, 14 fights are now down to 13. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of good because I would have bet on Duran win and probably would have lost. So uh, instead of having 14 win, 14 fights trying to make up for one loss, now we have 13 fights. So first one on the card, we have Sergey Morozov versus Journey Newsom. So um, this is what I've been able to gather throughout the course of the uh, of, of the week. You know, Morozov, who has just an ex just a distinct wrestling edge. Um, he is just, um, uh, Newsom is not the greatest as far as his takedown defense. Morozov is just going to basically blanket him and control him. Okay. And as a result, it's, it's a minus 300. Okay. Um, I feel as though that this is just, uh, the only thing I will say is that a lot, some people are saying the line is a little too wide. So what I have to think about here is this is what in this line, this is driven by nonsense. And I think that the line is probably pretty fair. I mean, because the line seems really big. And yet I don't really see that many people taking Newsom either. So I think that the line is, is, is pretty good. So what I'd like to do in a situation like this is, is just, is just fade the narrative. In other words, the, the, the idea that Morozov is just going to wrestle him and control him. We're going to play him to finish, okay? And so the question is whether it's going to be just by uh, a, 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 a inside the distance, whether it be inside a particular round. Let's just mosey around and just kind of take a look at this. Um, and what let's see what makes the least amount of sense, and we'll play that one. So we have Morozov to win by KO is plus 200. Submission is plus 500. That's actually pretty interesting. But I'm not exactly sure which way makes more sense between the KO and the um, and the submission. So we're going to pick like an actual round here. So we're going to say, and these are the ones I love. I love these these fighters in in later rounds because so much of the of the uh, KO upside and so much of the uh, the finish upside is kind of like taken by the first round. I think these second and third rounds are a lot of fun. So. We're going to take Marazov either in round two or round three. And I've been pretty hit or miss with these in, in the few, last few weeks. Sometimes I pick a round two and it goes on round three. Last week we had Shabazian going around two and he was just beautiful. Let's, and it's just a question of how much faith we want to provide that Newsom can kind of keep things going. Let's, let's go right off the bat. And let's start with a round two plus 650. So we're going to go Morozov, round two plus 650. And we can't put it in yet. We're going to have to just uh, wait till we get to all of them. Okay, uh, moving on. I think moving on. Yes, so, so David Dvorak against Manal Cap. So here's the deal. So Manal Cap was originally known as, as, as someone with... Uh, very low volume. He kind of had, had a tough time kind of letting his hands go. These are more platitudes that are thrown out by the DFS community. And then finally, in his last fight, he finally ran through any through somebody. And he's fighting David Dvorak, who is kind of known as kind of a smart fighter, 
um, more of kind of a decision guy or something like that. But um, people aren't exactly sure whether Pop is going to be, you know, aggressive or he's going to be just kind of low volume. But it's pretty clear that Cop has the advantage. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to take Dvorak. So Dvorak plus 205 just in the money line. Because, again, I don't want by accident him to knock out Cop. Um, that would be a little annoying. Okay, uh, moving on. We have oh, this one. This one. I like this one a lot, actually. So we'll go to Brian Battle versus uh, Renat Fakhmadinov. So this is one where where the, the DFS community is on one side of this, one side of this, and the betting community is pretty clearly on the other side. So, uh, and th this type of fight happens all the time. You know, you have somebody who's a wrestler who comes in and is against a guy who's like more of a striker, and the DFS community just lines up on one side, and the betting community just lines up on the other side, and uh, I guess it's more of the purists of, of the of the MMA betters that they like the strikers, whatever it is. So in a situation like this, I mean, I, I've, I've listened to a lot of different betting podcasts and very, very few people are on the Renat side. Um, and yet he's still a minus 145. That is going to be good enough for me. So I will actually take the Renat side. It's only a question of whether I want to take him uh, inside the distance or not. I'm not exactly sure about that. So we're just going to take Renat minus the 145. Okay. Um, moving on. We have Hafa Garcia versus Machete. All right. So you have this, this is again, this is this, this to me is kind of easy. So you have Machete who is coming off is stirring first round KO over Steven Garcia. And he is now coming to fight uh, Hafa Garcia. Um, Hafa Garcia is a different Garcia, obviously. And Garcia is, is, is more of a wrestler. Um, so what, what we're getting is this, unfortunately, we have Machete being from China. This is my, this is the takes I'm getting from East Asia, is going to be unable to deal with the wrestling of Garcia. And, you know, and most people are saying this. <laughs> and, and as a result, this machete one round, uh, one round KO was kind of a fluke and that Garcia is just going to control him. I will take a shot and I will play machete. Now, we're going to get really, really greedy here. OK, um, because I think most of the people that play machete are going to play him by KO. So what we're going to do, and this is kind of gross. But we are going to play Machete by decision. So Machete by decision will be a plus 330. And we will see what happens. Now, again, you know what's possible. I will tell you what's possible. And this has happened. You get the Garcia gets the takedowns. Machete gets a couple of damages, a couple of good strikes. People think Garcia wins. And you get Machete by decision. As a matter of fact... I will tell you what I'm going to do. I don't think they have it here. Fight props, round props, winning method. Mm, they don't have it here. Oh, they do. Oh, please, one time have this. Submission. KO submission win by finish. Doesn't have it. I really want to bet on a split decision here. In most all of these fights, these grappler versus um, versus uh, strikers, you can if you can get a bet on a split decision, it's probably a good idea, and that's probably what I would do. Boy, oh boy, machete win by decision, or should I just go the fight goes the distance? Mm. Three thirty is so juicy, though. Let's let's compare these. So you have. Machete plus 330, or we could go over two and a half rounds, minus 185. We can go draw, no, 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 machete by decision plus 330. Just machete in general, plus 115. 
Yeah, well, we'll get, we'll get greedy. We've been running hot. We're going to go machete by decision, which nobody has at plus three. Um, okay, moving on. Saeed Nurmagomedov versus uh, uh, Saeed Kakramanov. I, I don't think people are, are making heads or tails of this at all. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. You're getting 50-50 on both sides. And I don't even think people know which guy that they're even talking about. Uh, first, I, here, one, one, one group of people telling me that, that Nirmaga Madoff is the grappler. The other one saying that the other one's the grappler. I think that they're really just poisoned by these guys and no one wants to take a stand. So what we're going to do is, is we are going to just bet the fight inside the distance. Okay. Um, so let's say... Uh, winning method no it's going to be fight line so total rounds we do total rounds or we'll just go inside the distance let's see um fight props fight inside the distance plus 110 for 180 all right um moving on jake matthews versus uh matthew semmelsberger this is this is another easy one for me Jake Matthews, and this is what you'll hear, he looked just so sharp in his last fight. Um, just And he's got pretty much Semmelsberger covered everywhere. Um, and Semmelsberger, I've heard, has reached his ceiling in his last fight. Um, he really just didn't really show much, although he did show a little bit of toughness. There's only two ways I can do this. One is Matthews inside the distance, or Semmelsberger outright to win. So we're going to let the odds just kind of determine this. If I can get Matthews, how about, again, round two? Either round two or three at, what do I want, eight, ten to one, as opposed to Semmelsberger plus 250. Let's see what these round props are. Yeah, that's what I figured. Round two is six to one. Round three is 11 to one. I don't know. Can Semmelsberger actually get finished? Maybe it's just just play this fight to go to the decision. Yeah, let's 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 go do that. Fight goes the distance. Minus one thirty five. Yeah, this I'm really not particularly confident in this one. This is like really weird. If Semmelsberger were less, I might take him because now I feel the line is fishy, but this feels like the right line. You know what? Screw it. We will take Semmelsberger after all. We'll take Semmelsberger plus 250 for 180. Okay. Okay. Corey McKenna versus uh, Cheyenne Blissmas. Uh, this is... Um, this is this is kind of a fun fight. Um, you have Cheyenne Blissmas, who, well, I don't get into all that. I did, I did this in my whole in my DFS breakdown, but she she was a minus four to one favorite a couple of fights ago, and then lost to a grappler. Um, and you know, it was a terrible performance too. The, the the opponent told her pretty much didn't tell her, but dictate exactly what she was going to do, like before the fight even started. And Cheyenne couldn't even stop it. And now she's fighting another just kind of stone cold grappler like that. And it seems like what I've been hearing a lot about, which makes sense, is styles make fights. Okay, so styles make fights. Um, I would just take Cheyenne Blissmas inside the distance. How about that? So we will go Cheyenne Blissmas. Question is going to be my KO. Or I should just make the whole fight inside the distance. Let's see that. What is that? It's even better. Uh Let's see. Money line, no fight lines, total rounds. So we go under two and a half or 270. This way, in case I'm wrong, and that and that she can um and that McKenna's really good, maybe she can get a sub. So do I want to go plus 270 under two and a half or plus 200 inside the distance for an extra what two and a half minutes worth that extra i don't think it is I, I i'm gonna actually get greedy again 
And we're going to go under two and a half for 180. We are really betting a lot of underdogs. But this is what we're doing. We're fading the fading the fading the, fading the public. All right, moving on. Uh uh, where are we? Cody Brundage versus Michael Oazechuk. This one is another, I mean, this one, I really like stuff like this. So you have Cody Brundage, who's like a wrestler. He's got that dog in him. I love when that happens. Um, and then you always say Chuck, who apparently has one round of gas tank. The idea is that he's really going to just kind of blow through Brundage here. Um, uh, and if the longer this fight goes, apparently the better chance Cody has to win. So obviously, you know what we're going to do, right? It's either going to be Ola Zaychuk by decision or Ola Zaychuk in round three. So let's just take a look and see what these odds are. Um, round props. Ola Zaychuk round three is plus, plus 10 to one. Ola Zaychuk by decision is plus 350. And this could be another one, by the way, that Brundage gets some takedowns, gets some control time later, but they just give him a decision. I think I'm going to do that because you get that extra extra vig of saying, oh, why I had him when everybody's complaining about the decision. So Ozecha by decision plus uh, 350. And then as usual, we're going to do something in the last fight to kind of like get all our money back after losing everything else. Okay, Drew Dober, Bobby Green. This one, we're definitely going inside the distance. Um, uh, I don't know if Bobby Green's just asking a little too much, I think, but I think overall this fight definitely inside the distance, the fight that people least expect to go there. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Fight lines. Uh, wait, that's money lines. Hold on a minute. Popular oh, fight props. So inside the distance, uh, plus 110. That seems awfully light which probably makes it a good bet. Alice Casera against Juicy J. Arosa. Juicy J coming off a remarkable performance uh, in his last fight. Uh, Caceres is known as just the gatekeeper who really, you know, can't beat anybody good anymore. And Arosa's back on a roll. So you think Arosa is going to be minus 400 here? Nope. Only minus 170, which means, of course, that Alex Caceres is a lock. So Caceres plus 145 looks good enough for me. Uh, I almost want to pick Caceres inside the distance. Ooh. But we won't. We're just going to go Caceres. Caceres plus the 145. Okay, I think we're at the, are we at the last two fights yet? Uh, no. So we're here, we're at Amir Albazi versus Alejandro Costas. Um, all right, so this one is just a, uh, like a he's like a minus 8 million. Um, and they're expecting him to run through him. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do what we always do in a situation like this, is pick him to finish, but we're going to pick the right round. We're not going to pick round one. Again, we're going to do what we, we hope to do with all these grapplers is just hope that they get a bunch of takedowns. This Costa guy just be just game enough to survive to round two and just cash a round two ticket. So Albazi and Ray round two plus 380. That looks to be the play. Okay, moving on. You have the co main event. Uh, Armand Sarukian versus Demir Ismagulov. If I really had it in me, I would play. Is I'll tell you where the value is. I mean, if you really want to know the truth, and then I'm gonna wimp out on this one. I, I'm gonna show you the value here. I, I just don't have it in front of me. Yeah, hold on, let me see if I can pull this up. Hold on, I want I want to find this. This is this is Ismagulov. The mirror is Magulov. Okay, so I want you to look at his at his last uh, bunch of fights. Decision, 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 decision. Okay, so the idea is that if somehow he wins, 
it is definitely going to be by decision. And the other thing is that he's got really good takedown defense and all this stuff, and it's tough to hurt him and all this stuff. So if you really want to know where the value is, you'll play Demir inside the distance at a billion to one. Okay. But just in case, we're just going to play the fight inside the distance. So fight props, fight inside the distance plus 165. Oh, not 185, we'll go 180. Missed weight by five. So uh, we're presuming that, you know, if you've been following me, my picks here, you're probably 0 and 12 going into the last fight. All right. So when you're 0 and 12, what do you need? You need like a 13 to 1 shot. And fortunately, I got one for you. We were so close. So close to getting this done last week. We were already up, so we were basically free rolling. We were so close to getting Makachev. Was it Makachev? No, it's the other. Uh, now I forgot. I, listen, I forgot the guy's name already. Um, in any case, the winner in round four or five. I forget which one we put it picked him in, but he was so close that we're 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 gonna do this again. We're gonna go with Strickland. Um, in round four or five, hopefully one of them is is thirteen to one to make this back. Let's see. Oh, let's go. Okay, so we could either go twenty five to one in round four or thirty five to one in round five. Oh my God, this is nuts. Okay. And the way it's got to happen, right, is that he eventually goes for a takedown and then and then submits him or something like that. Boy, if we only need 13 to 1, maybe we just go for round three. It's harder. It's harder to finish the guy once you've gotten in there. But boy, if, I, if I go round three and round four hits this time, I will never forgive myself. So I think it's going to be... So here's the narrative, right? So here we go. We have, because the thing is that Strickland is an idiot. He could go for takedowns, but he's not going to. Okay. So we're presuming that the public is wrong. He realizes this and eventually goes for takedown. So first round, he won't do it. And then the second round, he'll get the guy down and then realize that he can do this. And then round three, he'll go back after it again and pound him and get the sub in round three. Or was it be round four? We're going to flip a coin. This is what we're going to do. We're going to flip a coin. This is going to be tails. This is going to be heads. Okay? If it actually, no, because the, the, there's too much gra gravity. In this. No, we'll, we'll spin it. We'll spin it. Wait, I don't know how to do this. How do we randomize this? And have you believe me? Oh, my lucky number's four. That was easy. So, Strickland round four plus 25 to one, 180. Or if I really, can I be a wimp? I play 90 on round four and 90 on round five. Because they both probably get me out for the day, right? No, that, that, that one doesn't. Round three or round four. I do round four or round five. And those will get me out for the day. Because we are losing all the other ones, obviously. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go round four. We'll go round four. And 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 we're gonna be in. So you'll have to trust me that I'm gonna log in and make all these. So let me let me uh let me review. Strickland round four plus 25 to one. Obviously, that's a lock. You have Sarukian not to go the distance, uh, that fight, plus 165. You have Albazi round two, plus 380. I don't know how that loses. Caceres, plus 145. Grober Bobby Green inside the distance. That's an atrocious bet. That's lose. That's winning. Alize Chuck by decision. How That is like a disaster. So that's winning. Under two and a half in the Glismas fight. Okay, that's not that off the wall. Semmelsberger, plus 250. Who, the, who is making this bet? This is a disaster. 
Saeed versus Saeed, they're not making it out of round two. Uh, Machete by decision, for real? I, I can't imagine this. You guys are really going to have to sleep on the streets after betting this stuff. Renat minus 145 money line. I guess that's the only one that has a chance. Dvorak plus 205, seriously? And Morozov, round two. How about right off the bat, a plus 650? How is that losing? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Let's see if we can log in and make our bets. Can we do this? No, it's going to watch this. Yeah, they can't look. They can't locate me. But after I log off, it will locate me, and I will be putting these bets in. So it's going to be a fun sweat. I'm probably not going to be able to see most of them. I'll be out. Um, but I will be checking in, and hopefully we're not all broke by the end of the night. Good luck.